Hello, everyone. I am Michael Pernforce, and this is Open Mic. Uh, a little bit of a twist today. I have a, um, a gentleman that is uh, arguably the best table tennis player of all times, uh, the evergreen tree, the Mozart of table tennis, uh, Jan Uwe Wallner. Great to see you, my friend. Thank you. How are nice things these days? Nice words. Yeah, it's been a while, but uh, hopefully we can see each other this summer. Yeah, we hope so. Maybe it's not from here. Yeah, yeah it, it looks like you got some sunshine behind you there. Uh, at the moment, it's a uh, little sunshine, a little rain, a little snow. Okay, a little bit everything, of everything. Just, you know, just, like, just like the Swedish uh, spring should be. It's better huh? in the May, you know. May is <laughs> Exactly. Better. Maybe in June, your life starts to be better. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's great to see you. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, you know, I've, we've had the opportunity to play uh, quite a bit of uh, exhibition sports against each other, all different yeah. kinds of sports. So, so I know exactly what you can do with, with any ball at any time. Uh, growing up in Sweden, uh, all these sports being readily available, what, what did you do back then? What did you play and, and what made you pick table tennis? Yeah, I think uh, I start to play with my brother in my grandfather's place, you know, then we played tennis, we played uh, table tennis, we played a little bit soccer. So I, did, I played three different sports, but then it was very easy for me to come into Sporwegen in Stockholm. I, it was a club there, you know, for, for table tennis. So for me, it was really easy. And also, also wherever we live, you know, in Sweden, we have the table, you know, in the, in the, at home, in the place in Breding where we live, we have the table down there. So it was easy to have a table to play. So I think uh, it started like this. And when I was six years old, I went to, I went to Sporwagen in the club there. And I was there like a mascot in the beginning. So uh, I, I could be weird, but after a while, they took me in, in, in the club. So I was very happy. And I was very happy to play in Sporwagen, one of the greatest clubs you know, in, in, in yeah, Sweden. Yeah. So, uh, and I, I know that you're very interested in tennis. You've been playing a, a lot of tennis throughout the years. Did you ever consider tennis or did you feel like, you know, fairly quickly became table tennis? Yeah, maybe I saw uh, after a while that table tennis was better for me. I think it was more power in tennis than maybe table tennis and then table tennis because table tennis, you, you have to be also thinking a lot about tactics and uh, also it was perfect for me with table tennis. I think, I don't know why, but. The feeling was it's a little bit like a chess game. You have to think a lot. So yeah, why I choose table tennis. But I also had six, seven matches in one club in in soccer also in Sweden. Not okay. a big one, but uh, so I played some matches in soccer. Yeah, but yeah. I think you, this you... is typical for all Swedish stars in different sports. We start to play many different sports to like 11, 12. Yeah, I, I, I've always been a proponent of that because I think that, you know, whatever sport you play and you're going to be able to benefit somehow in whatever pick you sport, uh, whatever sport you pick uh, yeah. to go forward with. Uh, so did you have, uh, so then you started playing at Sporwagen. Uh, how early did you get to the point where you were pretty much focusing on becoming a professional? Maybe that's the wrong word to say professional this early, but. Uh... But I think everything changed after I, when I went to China in 1980. I was only 14 years old. Then I saw how they practiced. I was there for one month for practice with Eric and my coach together. And after when I come home, I, I, I know that I have to practice a lot. And then after, of course, when I was 15, I stopped the school. Then I think the decision was now I will only play for, I will only go for table tennis. I stopped the school and I spoke with my parents. They was maybe not so happy, but they understand me. Yeah, but yeah. they was, uh, they was pushing me for sure also. And then I had my brother two years old, he was playing also. So it was very easy for me to, to stop the school. I didn't like the school so much also. So it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not there, you know. I, was, I, I know that feeling. <laughs> so <laughs> so, I, so how would a, a week look like, uh, you know, now you're, now you're playing full time. What would a week look like uh, in, in practice? Mm, I was uh, always like one day I practice two times, next day one time. So I, I mix it up all the time. And a lot of you know, running and physical training. And then we start with some weight training, 87, 88, when I was around 
over 20 then, then we started okay. changing it yeah. into yeah. practice. And then 89, we beat the Chinese team, you know, and then we practiced really hard, I remember, with a lot of weight training. So it was very okay. tough. It was yeah. a new yeah. thing for us in, in, in table tennis. I don't know with tennis, you know, they probably did it a long time before us. Well, I mean, I, I think that we, again, we grew up playing pretty much playing tennis and not yeah. doing a tremendous amount off court. And that has certainly changed. And that was, yeah. you know, kind of changing in the changed. middle of my career. Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah, for our time, it's, I think it changed a lot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you feel like uh, back, back then, did you, because we have a, 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 we talk a lot about playing sets and, and playing match, mm -hmm. match in match situations. Did you yeah. do that a lot or was it more of a, you know, drills and, and, and practice sessions? At first, we always start you know, with some uh, control exercise and then after we like, had some footwork practice, you know, uh, like two times each, 10 minutes. And then after the, rest we always start to make some different serve and maybe you put some different type of what i like you know short in four on a long receive but where i want to practice where I, want, where I want to practice my shots but sometimes the concentration was not so high when you come to the service exercise and receives so i would like to say that i say we, we play sets instead and yeah, put some yeah. money on and or do something for or one coca-cola something for the winner and uh, this was this was working much better, and I think the 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 match practice in practice, if it's good, is the best practice for me. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree with you. I heard Matt uh, when he spoke with Matt Villander also. He also say, I think the same. When you practice and match practice, very it's important. Yeah. I think. Yeah, no, you unfortunately. Can yeah, no, and I, unfortunately in tennis today you have a situation, especially with juniors, is that juniors don't want to lose, so they don't yeah. play each other because they don't feel comfortable going in, and, and and parents don't feel comfortable with their kids losing in practice. So it's 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 been a big it's problem. Been strange, huh? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's it's a very strange concept knowing that how how good it is for you to play a lot of practice sets. Uh, yeah, I know it, it was really good. I remember. It, yeah, yeah. Because my concentration was very high, and when it was some matches. Yeah, yeah. Better match player than practice player. Yeah, I think yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have, did you have a coach that inspired you in particular? Somebody that you know that brought you through the junior age and then into the pros, or? I think the I think the coach just in the beginning was the most important. I always took up three or four coaches when it, also this time in Sporveg and the guy who took me up to the to the to the first league and I could play with the, with the top player in the club. I think this was the most uh, important uh, trainers. We have two, three different, I, I cannot say only one, but also I, I was always lucky that I had my brother. He was two years older. So he was like a coach for me many years. And then I have Michael Applegreen, you know, who is four years older. He was a lot together. He was also uh, giving good advices to me. So I had, I, I, it was really good for me in the in Stockholm yeah, this time. Yeah. But I, I think two or three coaches, but I, I cannot say one exactly. Okay. Because we have some coaches on Monday, we have one, and on Thursday, we have another one who, who, who made the practice in, in, the, in the club. Okay. Yeah. And uh, as, as tennis is, table tennis is an individual sport, but uh, knowing you and knowing all the other guys, I, I think that you, know, you play team competitions and you grew up in Sweden yeah. and playing in, in different leagues and, and club. Uh, how much do you think that influenced you uh, having, you know, pretty much teams around you uh, growing up? Yeah, I think it was very important that you have a team and you could learn from the other. And also when you come up to national team, I think first, uh, first week you always played the team tournament, you know, in world championships and like this. And the second week was the single. So, also from the start to have good results in the team and we have also always a good team so i think it was very important also when i was young to go with the team together and you can get inspiration from the other kids you know you saw they was winning and you also can win you know yeah, so yeah. i think it was already from beginning very important that you have a team and i think this was very good uh, with the club and sport and we always travel together, you know, 20 players in the, in buses or like this. So it was a lot of team spirit, even yeah. if it was individual sport. I yeah. think also this is, Sweden are very strong in, in, in the team sports. Like I, I, that kind of, uh, kind of brings me into my next question. Yeah. And, and you get this question quite a bit, uh, traveling around is that 
people want to know how can Sweden create so many good athletes in different sports being such a small country? Do you have a feel for or what you, your opinion around that? Uh, I think from beginning, many good coaches when you are young. It's very important. And also, I think uh, uh, we, we have a good country when we grew up. We're quite safe. And even if we, don't, if we, don't, if we make some mistakes or if we make uh, some bad results, we can always go back to school. So I think we are very uh, comfortable, or what can you say, in, in ourselves. You know? yeah, and, uh, yeah. uh, so even if we are losing, we have uh, other we can go back to school again i think i if you compare to other countries like in in, in the, like china and like this in tibet and if they if they cannot uh, come to the team they out you know yeah we yeah. get some more chances also and i think also we like to play in team i think it's my opinion we, we, yeah, yeah it's very big for us to play in the team and I, I think that's uh, that's very true. I think it's it, and I think it, like you said, it comes from our upbringing and, and the way we're taught to to deal with each other. And I, I think what's what's so cool for me to see because I, I I was in a group of, you know, maybe twenty guys that traveled together on tour, yeah. and we've all stayed friends. Yeah. You know, even even thirty years after retirement, we still stay in touch. And I I think it's the same with you guys. I yeah, see yeah, you the guys. Same with uh, all the players, yeah. you know, Tikan, uh, Apelgren, Jurgen Persson, all this guy, Eric Lin, they are friends still. So yeah, yeah. yeah. when you pre- when you travel so long time together, um, we have the same like you. I think we had uh, one time five players top ten in the world. So it was yeah. Sometimes no, uh... some other place was winning. You know, sometimes one won European Championship and he was number five six. You know, like Ulf Beng someone time he was number six in the Swedish team and he yeah. was European champion. He beat Gruba in the fi- Andre Gruba in the final. You know, it was so and uh, it, yeah. I think we have good inspiration from each other also. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, so we talk a little bit more about your uh, uh, career here. And, and uh, tell me a little bit about uh, the World Championships in 1997. Because you, you, you win the event without losing a set. Yeah. What what was there a feeling like going into that event that this is going to happen, uh, or did it go as you as you went along in the event? I, when I came in, it, I was not sure at all from this results, you know. It, and also in the team, I was not so good. I remember I lost with uh, Vladimir Samsonov, who was a great player in the team, very very easy, like 26, 21, 6, 21, 8. and Jurgen won the last match there against uh, Belarus. I think it was this time. Uh, so when I come into the thing, I think I have a good draw in the beginning. I play against one defender, I play against one left defender. So my draw was perfect the first three rounds. And after that, I get good confidence. You know, I, I won so easy the first three matches, 3-0. And then I could play relaxed in the end and everything was working suddenly. And then in the final, I play Sansonov again. And this time I feel to unbelievably good in the final yeah, yeah, i had a good yeah. start also all, all the first sets i had i won like 21 10 and i was so good in the first sets i remember yeah, that's but, an, uh, in, it incredible was in incredible feat. in olympics I, I lost only one set when i won so maybe i'm a front runner you know yeah well, well, you've proven <laughs> that <don't> <laughs> when my game is on it's on yeah yeah so if you if you get to pick one individual table tennis match that you won, which one would you pick that was the most satisfying? I think I have to pick uh, final 92 when you won the, when I won in Barcelona. Yeah. It was so special in so many things, in, in so many ways. I, I was the only one who won the, the, the gold medal for Sweden. I didn't have a gold for, I don't know, I don't know eight, 10 years. I, I, yeah. I don't remember. It was, so it was very special in Sweden also when I won this time. So I, I have to say that this match and it because also the third set I was down 20, 21, 20, 23, 22, and then and then I won 25, 23 or something. So it was very special end also from the match and also yeah, some yeah. good rallies. So 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 it, it felt spe- uh, really special. Also to play in the Olympics was fantastic. One of the biggest yeah. things for me only to be yeah, there yeah. to win is fantastic. Yeah, that's awesome. And it, do you have one match in your career that you'd like to have back? Menu. Hey. <laughs> oh, I have so many. I have I've won a lot, but I have so many tough 
Yeah, yeah. I remember with Upper Green, sometimes the European Championships, I was up 2 0. One time we got the iron, and also the guy I beat in the Olympic final in, in, in Göteborg in European Championships, I had 12 match balls or something, and high okay. balls and miss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I, I'm going to assume yeah. that you understood that, that you learned from that as well. I, I, I think this was my best, but I could, I could even get the. Uh, I couldn't even practice more hard for the next tournament after when I lost. So I uh, think it was really good when I lost the first time uh, in my first big final, 1982, against uh, Apple Green. I was up 2 0. This time I was maybe number 50, 60 in Europe. I was very young, I was only 16 years old. So I think it was good uh, that you lose in the beginning. Same with the World, World Championships in, uh, in Dele, 87. I lost also the first final, and after I won. So I think this is uh, for motivation. It's good to not that you are not winning the first big final. I think, yeah, yeah and it's yeah. why I could play so long. I think also. Yeah, I mean, you had a very long career, yeah. so yeah, yeah. yeah. But do do you feel that uh, you know having such a long career that it was at any point a struggle because there was a lot of pressure on you that you had to keep succeeding or? No, the most problem for me was with my back. Okay, it's, it's still not. Perfect. I remember when I played 2004, my last Olympics, when I came into the semifinal, it was really tough. I had some Volta Arena and all this and everything to be ready for the match. I was must have, I went up, you know, five, six hours before the match. A little bit like Tiger Woods, I was being, <laughs> like he did yeah. now in the last years, you know. And yeah, yeah. Shit. And then I... I took it down after I played only in the Swedish league, and then it was enough for me. And I had yeah, some other yeah. things to do also with with Matthias, my friend here. So it was really good that I stopped, I think. Okay. Well, yeah. For my body yeah, also. Good. And now so, I can still play some golf. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's that's <laughs> priorities. That's priorities. Yeah, it's very important. Yeah. For me to, yeah. to do and I'll be back, I'll be back in Sweden in about a month, so we have to set up a game there. Yeah, we take Bruhoff then. No? All right. Sounds sounds good. So we talk about your, your best individual win. What would you say is the, your, your greatest table tennis experience? Like, what, what do you go back and say, that was the day, that was the best day of my career? Mm. I think the first time, 8-8, eight, eight, when I came with the, with the whole team to Olympics. I'm a fan from Olympics. I always watch all the Olympic games. Okay, athletics is very big, you know, and other sports are, are <laughs> I mean, athletics is very, very big, but uh, the other sports are a little bit smaller. But I think first time when I came to, to Olympic Games, it was really big. And also my first trip to China, this was also big for me. Yeah. And also I think the first, and now it's three times, three things. <laughs> also the first time I won, but I won, uh, I was Swedish champion when I was very young. I think this I remember quite well also. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's great to have so many greatest experiences. You know, yeah. that, that talks about a wonderful yeah. career, and also the fact that you can kind of go, you know, to the really big events to be special, but also the smaller events. Yeah, that, I that... think this 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 tournaments you remember when you won when it was 12, 13 years. I remember all all the all the balls in the end, and you know which which guy you play. I, I spoke with Jonas Björkman some days ago, as a tennis player. And he say also this, we spoke about this when he was 11, 12, and this match yeah. is really funner because you remember them so well, more than the big matches. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it was so big to be Swedish champion or when you won in your club first time. And these things are so big still in, in my head. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you know, this is, uh, this is actually a tennis app. Yeah. So we're going to have to ask you something about your knowledge about tennis. So we've got the French Open and Wimbledon coming up here. Yeah. Let me hear who you think are going to win men's and women's singles in those two events. French Open. We start in the French. Uh, I think it's time that Nadal is losing. So I think Sverre will win. Very good win. Okay. Okay. I think so. If if it's if if the server is working and he don't, it's not making so many double falls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been struggling <laughs> this is with his that. problem. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. offensive or something. Yeah. But I think it's 
it must be that Nadal is losing. And also now you can see that he was losing before in some tournaments now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, he beat Djokovic in the last one now, but yeah, I think it's time. Yeah, he's, he's getting up and there in age. I mean, it's going to end at some time. Yeah. And yeah. with Edwin Singh, uh, Harlet is not playing, I heard. And I am not so good there, but difficult. Difficult. So All right, I'll, I'll, I'll let you move on to Wimbledon then, and you can think about it. Wimbledon. Of course, you hope Federer will win, but uh, uh, I think Djokovic will win. He's okay. all around. Yeah, yeah. He will win. And Serena okay. is winning Wimbledon now. Serena is winning Wimbledon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, uh, you, I really uh, appreciate your time. It's great seeing you and talking to you. And I, I really hope that we get to see each other here this summer in Sweden. And uh, good luck yeah. with all your adventures and uh, take care of yourself. Huh? Yeah. When are you coming? Uh, I'll be there end of June. So get ready. End of June, yeah. End of June. Of course, this is perfect. Sounds good to me. Yeah, thank you. All right, my friend. Thank Take care of yourself. You. Take care. Thank you. Uh, I'm Michael Pernforce. This is Open Mic. Uh, we'll see you next time. And don't forget the drop shot. <laughs>